about every audition that you'll take, there's going to be some low notes. And probably the most popular excerpt to use for that is from Bizet's opera Carmen, The Prelude. I want to take you through some exercises, um, which I've compiled onto a PDF, which you can see on my website, benwrighttrumpet.com. And basically go through like how to make things a little bit more solid down there. I feel like a lot of times people come in and they play this excerpt and they're, they're so focused on all the details of playing an excerpt that they're kind of missing the important part. The most important part is how are your low notes, right? So my first teacher, uh, Jim Burson, who was a wonderful, wonderful teacher and now is a park ranger and a camper, professional camper, um, uh, said that everything, everything was about the trumpet was starting with a good low register. So um, I don't know if I found that to be true, but I do have a good low register. So, um, and I have to do it for my work. So the first exercise I would have you do is actually, and all of these are exercises based around, around the excerpt Carmen. So the first one is just to work out the fingerings, right? Because we have to play down to a low F and we have to figure out the fingerings for the G sharp that comes before the low F, okay? So the first thing is just a half note exercise and it goes like this. That was pretty bad. I think I'll do that again. sympathetic to our issues um, we don't want them to say is that is that a real note right you want them just to be oh that sounds beautiful so that's the first thing so triggering the G sharp and playing it third valve allows you to not do what some people like to do which is pull all the slides out and change all the fingerings the first couple of phrases to me that ended up being too complicated just leave the trigger out and again <laughs> So just practice that over and over. The next exercise is sort of like a, a, a framework uh, of the first uh, several phrases, okay? And you want to make sure that as you hit each sort of micro cadence, so you have... of the first phrase, right? You want to make sure that you keep your sound beautiful. And what is going to keep your sound beautiful is if you stay in the middle of the pitch. Most people tend to sag, they fall. So by the time they get to the first B, they might be I kind of overdid that, sorry. So it's flat, and then you build on that flatness. So I think it sounds kind of sad um, and difficult, right? Not to mention out of tune, okay? So the next exercise is also in half notes and you should use the stamp concept of staying up as you go down. consistently the more you'll actually be able to ignore it or make really quick adjustments and not actually sort of fix your ear. So you need to do that a number of times. Let's say every practice session you do it five times. Okay, now the next exercise makes it a little faster. straight into 
into it and pop my slides out. And I will say that right now, this slide is sticky. That's not good. You should be able to kind of look at your third slide and have it pop out. So I need to do a little bit of maintenance. Okay, so now I'm gonna do it again and I'm going to extend the slides before the last measure. <sighs> really well in tune, I have to go all the way out with the third slide, and I have to give a little English on the first slide. And notice how my hand is a little bit unhinged here. That actually kind of helps me. Um, so when I play through the excerpts, you'll see, you'll see how these slides move in context. Okay, now the next thing, we're just expanding on this bass that we're building. The second one, when I came in the second measure of that drill, my B was flat, so I'm going to try to fix that. Okay. Notice we're not playing anything of the rest of the excerpt. We're working on getting this set up, because once this is set up, you're pretty good for the rest of the excerpt. It's all the same concepts get applied to the rest of the excerpt. The next thing is to make sure we're singing through the tie, right? So I hear a lot of times people go either or either they back off or they push way too hard through it. So the thing that helps me with that is very lyrical subdivisions. subdivision. I'm trying to make the subdivision very lyrical, very fluid, and I'm um, making sure that actually every time I can slur, I slur. So for instance, instead of, oh, I just did it the right way, sorry. Instead of this, which is a nice lyrical subdivision, I'm going to slur every time I possibly can. Okay. That subdivision technique is huge. It helped me with so many excerpts and so many things where, you know, I want to make things smoother. That's the way I think. Okay. Uh, next would be... Um, to repeat that several times then we're gonna we're gonna work on what comes next which is making sure that the ties are long enough going forward <laughs> to singing through that last tie and, and finishing the note, taking a breath and going on. So now we'll work through the second half of the excerpt. I definitely recommend using the techniques we used for the first uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars for the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars. 
when you get to the soft stuff, let's work through the pitch of this um, separately, okay? So just, again, simple little exercise. So I'm not really very pleased with a lot of that pitch-wise. So I'm going to go in through it. sure that those are stable and smooth slurs. So I'm much more pleased with the pitch there. Just another note about these ties, which happen throughout this excerpt. I'm definitely thinking a slight crescendo through the tie so that we get a singing connection there. So like this. I should say a quick note about sip breathing. Right now, it, it, in these little phrases where you've got two, two bars and it's piano, you don't need a huge breath, which is a mistake I made just this last time at the beginning of this little um, excerpt. I took a huge breath and I was sort of overfilled and then I tried to squeak the note out and it kind of blipped on me. So I would take what, what I would call, or what Chris Gecker introduced to me, um, what he called the conversational breath. Because if you're going to say hello to somebody, you don't go, hello, right? So you say, hey, how's it going? There's like a very small intake of breath. Don't take this too far. It's just a concept, right? Okay? So... dramatic at the end and what happens on that last note right the symbol goes Psh! right so it's a short note but you really want to lead up to it right so you really want that tension there takes a little bit of time and, and juggling between the accents and the, the dots, um, you know, can be challenging. So, you know, I would play this with the recording. I would turn it on. You know, you won't, you'll never get the first entrance right. But once you get into the hang of it, meaning you'll never be quite coordinated with the recording because it's always a little different. But once you get used to it, then you can play along with it and you can kind of get the feel of it more. So once I've practiced all these things, I would go back and play the excerpt.
will definitely go back and listen and see what I hear. And if there are adjustments to be made, I'll take some notes and then I'll come back tomorrow and hit those adjustments. For now, I'm gonna leave Carmen for the day. For a copy of this PDF and lots more information on lots of stuff, please head to my website, benwrighttrumpet.com. Have a good day.